I didn't think I was going to be nervous, but I am. Welcome. It has been what I think an extraordinary WordCamp thus far. Uh, my name is Chloe Bringman, and I'm honored to introduce our last keynote speaker, WordPress co-founder and the CEO of Automatic, Matt Mullenweg. Yes. So Matt's vision for an open and accessible web has helped shape WordPress and, by extension, the web as we know it. His commitment to open source principles has advanced WordPress and fostered a global community of contributors and innovators, many of, who, of whom are gathered here today in this auditorium or online. Now, uh, we have a little bit of some housekeeping um, before I ask you to join me in a warm welcome to bring Matt onto the stage. Um, some tips for asking questions live. I'd like to ask you to introduce yourselves briefly um, when you have the floor. We're eager to hear from as many of you as possible during today's session. When you're speaking, please talk slowly, clearly, and directly into the microphone so everyone can hear you well. And you have the opportunity to ask Matt what has been on your mind. So let's make the most of this time together and be mindful of the other attendees waiting their turn. If you have additional questions after your first, we kindly ask that you save them for another opportunity. There will be a couple of volunteers who are running around with microphones on either side of the auditorium. Raise your hand uh, if you have a question for Matt. And so without further ado, Please join me in welcoming Matt Mullenweg to WordCamp Asia 2024. Hello, hello. How y'all doing? Did you have a good WordCamp? I am so excited to finally be here. Oh my goodness. I mean, 2020, 2021, 22, 23, there's, there was reasons I wasn't able to make it for each one. Some reasons we all couldn't make it for some of those. <laughs> but uh, it's so great to be here today and in this amazing room. with a, I, I really enjoyed uh, a lot of the talks I got to see um, and happy to talk about any of those. But yeah, who's got their hands up? We can start queuing up some, some questions. I am visiting today from Houston, Texas. Oh, am I supposed to point? Okay, how about over there? We can get started. Introduce your name, stand up so people can see you, and Hello. let's get started. My name is Milana Tsap. I am from Serbia, and uh, always first question. Yeah. So here uh, at this WordCamp, we saw some changes to speakers program. There were invited speakers, and I would like to propose something. Uh, there are a lot of, if we are talking about the diversity of speakers, there are a lot of speakers, good speakers, who are involved in WordPress, who cannot attend these big events because of financial uh, difficulties. So there are initiatives to help them. One of them is supportinclusionintech.com. Please visit that. And my question is, uh, will, will foundation or and or automatic support such initiative to help you uh, speakers who cannot attend and are actually good speakers to come and, and maybe have another addition to speakers program to actually help people? Thank you for the question. Thank you. Uh, yeah, we've had invited speakers at many, many WordCamps before, going back to some of the early WordCamp San Francisco's that predated like WordCamp United States. So it's not a new program. I would encourage folks to, like speakers who want to speak at any WordCamp around the world, to apply. And then if you're, regardless of whether you think you're financially able to attend or not, so get your talk in first, right? And then if you're accepted and there's some barrier, I think both Automatic and many, many other companies uh, would be very excited to sponsor uh, folks to, to visit. And it's actually, I think, a relatively cost-effective way uh, to do it. Now, WordCamps do have a sort of, uh, certainly the local, like the city ones, tend to want to emphasize local speakers. But for these regional ones, sure, let's get people from all over the world. 
We have that here today, and I think it's part of the, the cool thing about these more continental word camps. So, does that sound good? Cool, thank you. All right, who's up next? The light's actually kind of bright. I might need to just to, folks um, with the mics, just run to people with the hands up. We got one up here, but it's a little hard for me to see some of y'all. And then if you want to go next, so we'll do that next. And then who wants to be third? Just so we can keep this moving. Want to get through as many as possible. Okay. How about over there? All right. How many? Uh, hi, mate. Um, uh, we met before. Uh, I'm Phoebe. And uh, our team kind of lives in a paradise, a parallel universe, which is in Web3. We are building something in blockchain to help media and journalists to actually achieve decentralized publishing. And our tagline is actually the same as WordPress, which is we want to democratize publishing. And I'm from Hong Kong. Um, so I want to see a view how Web3 could coordinate with this mission um, that we have. Uh, and obviously, we are one of the very rare um, Web3 plug in that here today. So I feel like I'm in a really rare like, situation where I'm the minority here. Um, so I just really want to have this conversation with you and see how we can truly achieve um, decentralized publishing to help people that are being censored, no matter it's from political censorships or commercial censorships. Um, yeah, thank you. Wow, thank you for your question. Um, and yeah, we did meet. I think you're, I've taken like a hundred, hundreds of photos of people. <laughs> and thank you for the t-shirt you gave me. Um, the, there's a lot to unpack there. So uh, I'll try to work backwards. Being one of the few Web3 companies here, there probably were a few more a few years ago, right? <laughs> <laughs> there was a, a little bit of a cycle there, and it feels like a lot of folks moved on, although now crypto prices are all the way back, so who knows, maybe there'll be another cycle. Um, in terms of WordPress's participation in it, you know, one way where I think, well, second, I would say, what is Web3, right? That could be a whole conversation. Um, you mentioned blockchain, so let's just, I'm going to assume for the sake of discussion that sort of like blockchain-based things integrated with WordPress, is that fair? Okay. Um, uh, there's... What's nice about a lot of these blockchain projects, I'm not sure about yours, but most are open source, which sort of just by default, we share some of the ideals with the open source nature of WordPress and its entire technology stack, you know, everything that it's built on. We're built on the shoulders of giants. It's open source turtles all the way down, as they say. So the, uh, there's plugins for pretty much everything. And as you know, our marketplace is totally open. There's no like cut you have to pay. There's, you have to go through the application process, which I apologize is still like, Ray behind, but um, but then yeah, it could be totally open. Uh, I think in terms of publishing things to like an immutable blockchain, um, that is a use case. It's kind of a tricky one because uh, well, one you could already do it. You could put things in like the block, uh, Bitcoin blockchain, right? And people have at the very first Satoshi node, right? Reference that uh, financial crisis article, crisis article. Um, so that's already possible. And then for everything else, I think large publishers. Um, tend to need some moderation capability, often even to comply with laws in the places where they operate. So, um, and for evading censorship, there are technologies like Tor and other things that allow people to get past it, including like Tor secret sites hosting and others. So whenever there's sort of a, a problem like that, I always say like, what are all the ways it could be solved? Um, does blockchain make it better or different? And are there existing blockchains that can solve some of the same things? Um, one I have had my eye on, because especially with, you know, we're in kind of our first AI election cycle, where AI tools are very prevalent, deep fakes have gotten so good, and, you know, I think, I forget the number, but like uh, over half of large democracies are having like major lessons in the next two years. And so um, something around uh, sort of being able to stamp content to be authenticated, whether it's photos, articles, and unmodified, I think is kind of interesting. There's been a number of proposals about this over the years. There's one a few years ago that I'm not sure where it is, but I just saw a new one last month that uh, his name is escaping me that I hope to look at when I'm back from sabbatical. Oh, I forgot to say that. Technically, I'm not supposed to be here. <laughs> so Automatic has this benefit where every five years, everyone gets two to three, year, three, two to three months pay time off. Um, it's a beautiful benefit. We've had hundreds and hundreds of people take it. Uh, I have not for 18 years. <laughs> And it was a very intense year last year. So I was like, ah, okay, in December, I announced that in February, I was gonna do the three months off. Um, and I had 
this on the calendar. I was like, I, I cannot miss WordCamp Asia again. So this is my exception. Y'all are my, uh, my exception to sabbatical. Thank you. <laughs> so, but for some things, like it's a little trickier for me to speak to automatic stuff because I'm not really in a day to day like I usually am. But May 1st, I'll be right back in there. <laughs> so, thank you. I think we were going up here next. And yeah. then we'll do there and then down there. So, I think you were next. Uh, Howdy. Uh, Hi, my name is Lena. I have been organizing WordPress event in Bangkok for many years. WordCamp Bangkok and WordCamp Asia 2023. Thank uh, you. Now that I'm working a mom with a small kids, it's harder to do this on group of about eight people. Five is difficult to get a new organizer. Can you give us an, an advice on how to get working parents, mainly moms, to join and see the good in being part of the WordPress community? Thank you. Thank you. Um, that is probably an area I'm not an expert in. <laughs> Not that I'm an expert in many of the things we're talking about, but in that one, I feel particularly ill-suited to have a great answer. But perhaps we could follow up with that with the events team, yeah, which has a number of working moms. <laughs> and so they'll probably be able to answer that better. So I apologize, I don't have a good one for you right now. Um, setting the example and leading by example, like you just did, and sharing your story, I think is also amazing. So everyone in this room and everyone watching the live stream now sees your example. And there's probably many more things like that we can do. So thank you. I think it was over here next. Yeah. All right. Um, what initiatives or project are you personally excited about within the WordPress ecosystem right now? That's a good one. And just to, so we keep it moving, I think there was a mic down here, right? So let's bring one down. Any on this side? Okay, right there. You'll be next and you'll be third. Um, initiatives I'm excited about on WordPress. Um, Gosh, co-editing for Gutenberg. So this is the idea, oh, we got a, yeah. Um, this is the idea that, I mean, not unlike Google Docs or many other applications, like in theory, not everyone in this room, but a lot of people in this room, or some people in this room could have the same document open at the same time. We could be editing it, it would be merged instantly, there would be no conflicts. Uh, if there, you went offline and came back online, that'd be handled in a really intelligent way. Um, this, I think, is just for collaboration going to be so cool. Like, imagine if you could send a link of sort of a draft for a new version of the site to a client or a friend, and then get on the phone and just kind of tweak things in real time with them. They could change something. You could change something. You could give them a lesson, you know? So you're, you're sort of telling them what to do. They're learning the interface, and then you're talking about it in real time. I mean, things like that, it just opens up such a wide array of collaboration and workflow that I think it's really uh, through that then going to open up WordPress to a much wider audience than it is today. And, uh, and then personally, I'm just really looking forward to it because um, you know, I've been writing for so many years now. And still, one of the craziest things is it's so hard to edit your own writing. And so everything I do, I mean, sometimes you can tell when I just publish without an editor, and then the first comment's like, oh, here's these three typos. And I'm like, ah, oh, I checked it like four times. <laughs> but now, um, you know, being able to have someone else in there. And then the other thing that could be cool is what if that entity coming in to chat with you and edit and do things is maybe an AI, like ChatGPT. That could also be really interesting. Like maybe calling it in and saying, hey, what do you think would make my site more compelling to audiences in Japan or something like that? That could be very, very, very cool. So, so that's, I'd say, one thing I'm pretty excited about. I'm also very excited about the location for the state of the world this year and where WordCamp Asia is going to be next year. So, <laughs> can't say it now, but y'all, if you stick around, you might get some, uh, some fun things there. All right, how about um, down here? Yeah. Thank you, Shisha. Could I ask a Goncharov of question? No, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Yogesh from Bangalore, India. I do have a Goncharov of question later, maybe sometime. But um, um, yeah, I'm, the project really I'm excited about is uh, data migration, the data liberation. Oh, yeah. yeah, and uh, so 
the way I look at uh, data liberation is, um, is, is uh, you know, it, there is a standard for printing paper, we call it in India. When we buy paper, we call it A4 sheet. It's the standard size. And so you type on A4 sheet on uh, your laptop and you print on A4 sheet. So whatever you're writing or printing or doing anything, you're most probably writing on A4 sheet and it's, not, it's, it's made by anybody. But so as um, WordPress uh, data liberation project, is WordPress getting to be the A4 of the web? Is this the, the standard? Is this like uh, the last fight back of the open source against the gated uh, gardens of people who are trying to take over the web? <laughs> <laughs> well, I think with you know, infinite scroll, it's like those dot matrix printers, it just goes on forever. Do you remember those? <laughs> Used to print out the signs. Oh, a lot of people don't recognize that. I feel a little old. <laughs> the stitches on the edge, yeah. <laughs> Thank you, Josepha. <laughs> I'm so glad we're getting younger generations in the WordPress. <laughs> the, um, you know, is paper a good analogy? I'm not sure. I do think of things like um, railroad gauges. So the idea that railroads sometimes used to have like different widths and things, and then we kind of standardized, and then we we're able to connect all the railroads in the United States. And um, I think about this a lot when I travel because there's so many different plugs. But actually, a cool thing like um, I saw at the hotel I'm in. They actually, all the plugs are kind of like one of those universal plugs you can plug anything into. I was like, oh, that's kind of neat. Maybe that's the future. Like, why does every single country, well, not every country, but, you know, there's so much variation and it, it feels a little silly to have to carry around all these adapters. Um, for the web, I think about, for data liberation, even when an export is available, um, there's a lot more term, I forget if Cory Doctor or someone else said it, but called malicious compliance. Corey said that? Yeah. Um, so governments are finally coming in and saying, hey, some of these big companies, you're really locking in users in ways that seem hostile or anti-competitive or just not nice. <laughs> so could you open up? And uh, sometimes the companies like really open up in a cool way, and sometimes they open up in this term called malicious compliance, where it's kind of open, but gosh, it's such a pain in the butt that it's almost impossible to use. And even some well-intentioned things like, uh, Google's takeout feature, it's really impressive. You can get everything from your Google account out. Um, but you know, when I do that, which I, I do a couple times a year to analyze some of the data, um, it takes like you know, 24 to 48 hours to generate. Like there's this, I'm like, hmm, I could just scroll on this page and kind of extract it from the HTML. <laughs> or I can press the export button, and you're gonna send it to me two days later. Like, that makes it hard for integrations. There's no APIs for a lot of these things. Um, and it's tricky. Um, when there have been APIs for some of these things, for example, Facebook used to have a ton of APIs, they actually got really attacked for it, right? Because Cambridge Analytica used it to gather a lot of data. So data being open can also be abused. Uh, so these are, these are very tricky topics. But what I think is, is not tricky at all is you accessing your own data. And I believe every single person, it's a human right that all of us should have immediate, standard format and uh, open access to our own data on these services. Yeah. And where it doesn't exist, we should write code to get it. <laughs> and that's the idea of data liberation. Um, because a lot of these companies aren't even bothering with malicious compliance. They're just saying, you know, we're, we're like a roach motel. Your data checks in, it can never get out. Um, and so that's what I want to do. I want to develop just a completely open source set of things that can, whether it takes scraping or spidering or you know, whatever it is to get your own data out. And, um, and then that could be, you can either go into WordPress or you know, Word, since WordPress is open itself, that can then be a bridge to pretty much anything else that people want to do with it. And I think that would be very po powerful, It'd be an incredible gift we could give to the open web at large and would sort of effectively increase user freedom quite a bit. So I introduced this in the state of the word in Madrid in December. Um, it started off a little slower than I would like. Um, if you are a company looking for a way to increase your five to the future contributions, adopting one of these data liberation projects um, can be really incredible. And it doesn't just need to be from other uh, services. You know, we, something we kicked off at WordCamp US was actually all the learning LMS plugins 
getting some data compatibility for some of their common uh, data. Uh, and we basically got all, or not all, but I think almost all of the big LMSs in the room in WordPress. So even c increasing compatibility within WordPress, I think would be pretty darn neat. So that's the plan. It's kind of what Gutenberg did, by the way. So Gutenberg tried to create a common block format because we saw this user need around sort of page builders and more atomic editing. And Gutenberg tried to create a common format that is easy to get things in, out of, in, to, and out of. So thank you for your question. Nice. Hello, Matt. Uh, my name is Piotrek, and I'm originally from Poland. And speaking about the uh, old things that are keep recurring uh, within the WordPress, uh, there is this um, WordPress.com and WordPress.org uh, issue uh, or like a division that only uh, seasoned people within the community understand. And um, would it be possible to retire WordPress.com, maybe uh, replace it with like Jetpack? <laughs> I, mean, I don't work there right now, so I guess. No, I'm kidding, I'm kidding. And then just have keep a different name. Yeah. WordPress.org, you know, as yeah. a one thing that nobody can, uh, you know, misspell or uh, confuse with anything else. Yeah, there's a few layers to that. First, thank you for the question. Um, and I wonder, like, was this like an original mistake <laughs> when we were setting all these things up? Um, we've had competitors who told us it actually made us way harder to compete with WordPress as a whole. Um, and then, of course, within the WordPress community, some people have liked it and some people haven't. I think one of the things which is actually changing very rapidly, which I know because I, I've been reading the public blog of WordPress.com, is you may have noticed they announced that their interface, which previously was different from WP Admin is now coming a lot closer. So what this will mean is part of the confusion I think stemmed from, like if you got a WordPress tutorial or watch something, or you got a client sign up for WordPress.com for hosting, which is I think great hosting, they'd say like, hey, this button you said is there is actually over here or something, or I can't find it. And so unifying the interfaces more, which means WordPress.com coming basically back to WP Admin, I think helps some of that confusion quite, quite a bit. And then the name. And as you all might know, I'm a domain name aficionado. <laughs> um, as you can see on there, I'm ma.tt. I would legally change my name to that if it was allowed by my government. <laughs> but you're not allowed to have a dot in your name or a punctuation like that. Uh, I think you didn't have apostrophes, but that would be kind of odd. Um, for my <laughs> um, the So we have w.org, actually for WordPress. And I find myself sometimes referring to it as w.org or warg. <laughs> you know, resistance isn't futile, but <laughs> resistance to freedom is. <laughs> uh, so that's a reference to the Borg on, um, on Star Trek. But so warg is kind of cool. And that could be, and it's just neat having a one letter domain name, like almost no one has that. Um, the other direction is we could keep wordpress.org as wordpress.org or wp.org and move uh, wordpress.com to wp.com which we have, or I thought about like submitting, like trying to get w.com, it's never been issued, so we'd have to like go through some sort of ICANN process or something. But I think we have a good argument for it. So that's kind of all the things I'm considering. Please no one else go out and get w.com now, <laughs> but <laughs> yeah. Uh, without that, it'd be kind of tricky too. So I think we'll still continue to like survey customers, see what's going on, see how this next change with the interface sort of changes the, the dissonance in the community. And if it helps, particularly around tutorials, education, just everything being a lot more cross compatible, and, um, and go from there. So that probably needs like six months to like sort of iron out, see how the usage is and everything, and also just confusion, so we can do surveys and everything. And then after that, definitely gonna readdress this. Oh, thank you. I also know some SEO people are like, no, don't change your domain. <laughs> Yoast is probably writing me a message right now. <laughs> um, I think we had it down here that was next. Y'all have to help me track the order. Um, so who was next? <laughs> was it you? Okay, I think it was this one. I think, sorry, third, the gentleman in the black shirt. And then, okay, next, next, so second. Do you have one over there on the side? Okay, third, and then all the way up there, fourth. Does that sound good? All right, man, we're gonna get through a good amount of these. This is awesome. All right. Okay, so uh, hello, Matt. My name is Tremi. I'm from Meghalaya, India. And finally, nice to meet you in person. So 
my question is, um, you have, uh, I think back in 2014 or 15, you give the community to learn uh, JavaScript deeply, right? So my question is like, uh, what will be the future of um, WordPress in terms of like development, uh, programming? Are we moving away like more into the JavaScript and less of PHP or is it, will it go through like the same pace as what WordPress is going right now? Thank you. Thank you. Um, yeah, that was, that was a fun, a fun shift. And I don't remember when it crossed over, and someone can fact check this, but I believe the majority of new code in WordPress is JavaScript now, and has been for some time. So in many ways, you could argue by what's the majority of activity happening, um, that Gutenberg has made us sort of a JavaScript first project. Um, and that shift was not easy. A lot of people had to learn new things. It was, it was, um, I was very, very, very impressed with how the WordPress community did that. Um, you know, I said the learn deeply thing one other time. Do you know when it was? Yeah, in Porto, December 2022, or November? Summer 2022. Anyways, before ChatGPT came out, I said learn AI deeply. So if you want to know where I think things are going, that's where it is. And that probably doesn't mean that we're going to be able to run AI models like on $3 a month shared hosting. <laughs> but I do think that we are all going to be using AI in our daily lives to augment our development, find bugs, fuzz things, test, improve everything from the code to the writing to the review times on the plugin queue or whatever it is. And so that's where I would encourage you all, take that time that you put into learning JavaScript to at least play with these tools every day if you can. I don't remember all the numbers. Who is, yeah? All right. Hey, Matt. Which way? Ah, there we go. Uh, I'm Russell from Bangladesh. Uh, I work as a marketer for a plugin development company. What I wanted to ask you is uh, the, some features as a content management system in WordPress are, to be honest, a little dated in terms of their architecture on, or in terms of their design. And as a marketer, there are some features that I need specifically to manage my content and manage my media. So. What would some of those be? Do you mind sharing? Uh, for instance, uh, the media library uh, content does involve a lot of media. So when I'm trying to manage media on my own website or on a client's website, it becomes difficult to actually track, with, track it with the media library inside WordPress. So I'll have to depend on third-party plugins that will actually let me manage them. So there are some basic features that I would say uh, do, should not actually require development from third-party plugins. That, are, that should be actually intuitively included in the CMS. So I actually in, got involved into the core contribution and I started uh, a ticket so that I, the feature is integrated. In Thank you. So, but Send me that ticket later, I'll check it out. Because I have my own wish list. Uh, sure, sure. Uh, so my question is, uh, when you're actually implementing new features in core, what's the line you draw between features that should be available as third-party plugins and features that should be included in core? Ah, wow, that is a good question because I would say it's one of the hardest things we do in core. And there is both an art and science to it. So, uh, and I think we've gotten it wrong many, many times. <laughs> Where we've brought some things in that we end up taking out later or moving into a plugin or just deprecating entirely. And I know for a fact there's many, many areas. Media library would be a great one that um, we could use a lot more. Like I would, let me think what's on my media library list. I actually, so I have over 30,000 photos uploaded to ma.tt um, because I used to you know, carry a camera everywhere because I was really shy. <laughs> I just, so normally at a work camp, I just take like 150 photos and upload them all. And so that added up really quickly over the years. Um, so I have a lot of these, actually like a large media company. <laughs> indexing it and actually back in the day had some really cool features that have regressed so for example i had a people tagging feature or, or and then a taxonomy for people it's part of why we developed cu custom taxonomies was my photo blog <laughs> um, there was indexing alt tags comments the metadata that we put in like the um uh, what's the name of the the format exif metadata um, so 
things I would love are being able to reverse, so being able to see which media is embedded in which post, um, almost like a, that's the ticket? Oh, thank you. A round of applause for him. That's awesome. <laughs> Oh, what are the chances? Um, I want to be able to do that. I want to do way more sort of the idea of like the sort of the golden copy of things. And then you can have different versions of it with different crops or, or filters or, or other things in different contexts. Um, we don't have a good concept of that. We're just creating new files for everything. Um, we still don't handle HEIC files well, at least with however my PHP is configured. Maybe that's a server issue. But gosh, I feel like we should be doing so much more processing on the client side and maybe even pushing some of that if I'm editing something. Maybe that's faster to do in the browser <laughs> in the JavaScript, which now have incredible virtual machines and really fast processors than it is trying to do that all on the server side. So uh, those are some of the things on my mind around it. And uh, yeah, some of the other stuff is probably still CDN stuff, like Jetpack Photon, which does like the real-time resizing and everything like that. Like that's still a little tricky, but, um, but yeah. So that would be some of my core media wish list. If anyone from Core is here, we'll write it down. <laughs> Thank you. Oh, oh, finally, you said, how do we decide? Um, yeah, I wish I could say it's just the things I like, but there's so many things I like that aren't in Core. <laughs> so it's really, it's, a, it's all in the tickets. So it's that conversation. Usually we debate it um, at our best. You know, people try to understand both sides of it coming in or not really, really well. I love the Charlie Munger thing where you should be able to argue your opponent's side of a debate just as well as you can argue your own or even better. And uh, use that to find like where it fits. Um, I would say our balance that I think about is kind of what everyone needs, but also how do you build what people are gonna need um, down the line. And many times with WordPress, you know, we have some features built in that no one's asked for originally, but now I consider them crucial to our integrity as a content management system. For example, the revision system. You'd be shocked at how many other content management systems you edit something and the old versions are gone. <laughs> so if you ever want to go back or know who edited it or anything like that, they just don't have it. The data does not exist. So how can you be a true content management system if you don't have that? At that point, you're just like file editing without version control. It's, it's, it's ridiculous. So <laughs> you can tell I judge content management systems a lot. <laughs> I, I use them all. So it's like, I'm like, wow, I can't believe they don't have this. So. Uh, that's that's kind of how the thought process goes. And I can't wait to see your argument for why that should go in core. I might drop in a little plus one there. <laughs> Thank you. Thanks. Okay. Hi, Matt. My name is Anand. I am from India. Uh, so last year, me and Pooja, we were planning to attend WordCamp Europe. And she might have also told you just before the session that our, we couldn't attend because our visa got rejected. And that's not about us. This happened with a lot of people from India, Nepal, Bangladesh, Pakistan, especially from our region. And there was a common reason, uh, because they doubted the authenticity of visa letter issued by WordCamp Bureau. Can you say that one more time? They raised the issue, they raised the question about the authenticity of visa letter that was issued by WordCamp Bureau. Because the question is that the event was happening in Athens and the visa letter was issued by an organization that is registered in San Francisco. So this is the common reason that we all got. And, and I, after, at that time, there was a lot of discussion on the Slack also. And the P2 post was also posted that there is need of uh, having a registered organization in Europe as well, so that this cannot happen in the future. But still this year, I, can, I have seen a, such a same communication, same communication on the Slack a few, few days back, and the WCU Slack has that they are still issue, issuing the visa letter from that part of India, but that part of the world. So, it can still become tough for us to get a chance to experience the WordCamp Europe. So can we do something about this? I mean, probably. <laughs> <laughs> because now we have WordCamp Asia to uh, get the experience of WordCamp, uh, flagship WordCamp, but still we want to explore that part of the world. How, what, what is the experience of that WordCamp Europe and WordCamp US? Yeah, so first I'll say, even though I travel a lot, um, not an expert in visas. Uh, and I've definitely experienced though where I like have to mail my passport off for a couple weeks or, but usually they go through. <laughs> I haven't had one to, denied yet. So the first thing I'll say is, you know what? They're loss. <laughs> How many awesome people did that country miss having in it? Uh, which country was it? Huh? Uh, Athens, Greece. 
Um, yeah, they missed out on tourism dollars, they missed out on so much. Um, two, I would say that it's been really cool um, here in Taiwan to have like some support from the government. And I think we even had a congressperson speaking the other day. Uh, um, who used to organize WordPress meetups. So, you know, the thing you just described is kind of a common sense thing. Like, there's a really good explanation for it. And I totally get that maybe at some level of some bureaucracy, someone felt like they couldn't make that decision. But there's someone maybe a level or two higher that can say, hey, look at this. These events happen. <laughs> Every year, all these years, this is a contributor. These are, you know, there's a million ways where I think you could easily justify um, why it's a really good idea to issue a visa to WordCamp attendees. Um, perhaps that could be something we consider, you know, before choosing a location in the future. And it looks like Joseph is going to say that we are. Uh, do you want the mic? <laughs> Hi, it's still me. I'm still Josepha. <laughs> Oh, thank you. Good. Um, yes. So this is something that we can certainly look at, and we do look at when we're trying to decide what country, what city to go to. But also, um, we have a, a crackerjack legal team at the at the old automatic place, and so we can talk to them to see what options are available to us. And and yes, that's probably the best bet because I also am not an expert in visas. Well, thank you, Joseph. How can we also use the size and influence of our community to get these issues heard by the right people? I don't know exactly who the right people are in some of these different places, but I'm sure we could figure that out, especially with the collective intelligence in this room. And finally, I will say, you know, do a work camp India. I'll be there. <laughs> so get everyone trying to go to your country. <laughs> Some other people, but is that about WordCamp India or? Oh. I've been pushing, so I don't know. There's something in the middle. We'll figure it out. <laughs> I think we're all the way over here, right? Remember, if y'all could help me track the order. <laughs> and this was the last one we chose, right? You were the fourth? Or was yeah. there anyone I chose after this? Okay, next. Okay, so first, second. Okay, let's see, how about way up there? Let's start at the top and work our way down. Third, fourth, fifth, sixth. Okay, so we'll start up there and then work our way down. Oh, okay, well, well lightning round. Hi, Matt. Uh, this is Prema from WP Manage Ninja. Um, I'm from Bangladesh, actually, and I'm also organizing this event, and thank you. We had... <laughs> Uh, we had a, a successful WordCamp last year in Silet, Bangladesh, and this year we are also arranging a WordCamp Silet. And my question is that, like, we are arranging WordCamps, but uh, in our community, the women participation is very less. Like, they, they do know about the community, they know about WordPress. 90% of women are educated about it, but still they are dropping. So, what resources currently do you have now so that I can inspire? So uh, many more women from my community. Do you have any resources? Do you want to jump in there? <laughs> like. Angela Jin. Hi, everyone. Uh, so, oh, my name is Angela Jin. Um, yes, <laughs> hi. Um, so, wonderful question. Uh, come join the community team. We have a number of resources on our uh, DEIB, Diversity, Equity, Inclusion, and Belonging page. And uh, we will, we absolutely want to uh, help you with that. So, yeah. Okay, y'all ready for the lightning stuff? Okay, start, start up there. Top row, yep. What's that? Oh, you don't have a mic. <laughs> well, that would help. <sighs> thank you. Thank you for the opportunity. I am Ganga Kafle from Nepal, the most beautiful WordPress community we have. Please. Uh oh, uh -oh. I don't know. I'm, I'm, I can proudly say that. <laughs> and everyone was asking questions to Matt, but I would like to thank him for making WordPress and making our living from WordPress. Thank you, Matt. Thank you. Thank you. 
Hi, Matt. My name is Ahmed, one of the organizers of WordCamp Asia 2024. Since my esteemed colleague didn't ask the question, I'll take the opportunity. <laughs> I, just I like want this. There's a plan. That's right. So, Matt, you've been to Taiwan. There was WordCamp Taiwan 2023, but WordCamp Asia happened first time in Taiwan. I want to hear two takeaways that you got from this event. Thank you. Ah. Um, you know, I'll say, first one, I, ah, I'm supposed to go quick. Uh, <laughs> so the first one I'll say is that I, you know, particularly from Noel's talk and sort of the talk around the plugin ecosystem and everything, I've been germinating a lot of ideas, particularly how to change the WP admin dashboard to make it a little more app-like and allow launching into different experiences. And I'm not sure yet how this is going to interact with the new admin redesign or or what, so it's kind of in the different phase, but it sort of also highlighted for me that our plugin taxonomy, that you can have kind of solo plugins, community plugins, or commercial plugins, is gonna be really, really critical to this, and I think it's not well understood, and I'd like to look at the numbers for how much it's being used right now. And, but how we present that in directories, and essentially our version of the App Store, and if there are things that we maybe even change with the, te with the terminology of plugins to sort of recognize that maybe Mainstream might be more familiar with the idea of kind of apps or modifications. It's a little tricky because plugins do actually change WordPress. You know, they're not like their own separate things like on a smartphone where you're launching an entirely new thing. Some of them are, but many are not. So, and maybe that's something else we put in the taxonomy. Like, is this something that's modifying existing WP admin screens? Is it integrating with them? Or is it kind of replacing that? Like, it's, it's a whole new thing. You have a whole new section. And how should that work navigation wise? I think becomes very, very interesting. There could be a modality kind of like on Google where there's kind of like the nine dots on the top right and that, that has like a little app launcher. Something like that could be kind of interesting. Um, the second thing is that uh, Taipei um, has, it was too short and I don't think I can eat anymore the rest of the trip. <laughs> <laughs> I've had beef noodles several times, a variety of dumplings, soup dumplings. Like I was like, I, that was one of the things, I'm a big foodie and wow, uh, Taipei has definitely delivered. <laughs> So thank you. Finally. Oh. Hi, my, uh, my name is Sam. I am from Indonesia. I want to ask you a question about Gutenberg. Uh, what do you feel about the current state Gutenberg so far? And how do you plan to reduce the level of abstraction inside the Gutenberg? Because I feel that Gutenberg might be how you call it, like harder to contribute as uh, you know, like new developers. Thank you. Cool, thank you. And let me do a quick check. Because um, we started late, can I have a little extra? Uh, can, can you? A little extra time, please. Since we started late? Yeah. Okay, thank you. <laughs> I was here on time. <laughs> just kidding, just kidding. Um, Gutenberg. Uh, the level of abstraction, I think the development, honestly, is something that you gotta learn. And I think that the way that Gutenberg does development and the JavaScript first is kind of the future of most web development. So it is unfamiliar for me as well, by the way. <laughs> like it's not what I learned originally. Um, and there are probably some abstractions that we could simplify, but by and large, um, I would dive into it. And uh, please avail yourself of uh, the word camps, the tutorials, the other people in the channels, like, let's teach each other. Like, so much of the learning in WordPress is peer-to-peer, -peer, and I think you will find in the Gutenberg core developer community a lot of, um, maybe even openness. You could suggest, like, hey, do you mind doing, like, a little Zoom and showing me something, or something like that. Certainly, it happens at word camps on developer and contributor days. I'd love for that to happen more outside of our in-person events. Um, in terms of how I feel about Gutenberg, you know, I have the thing where I'm, like, the unhappiest WordPress user in the world. <laughs> So I do, I, I just, you know, when I use the software, I, I can see in my head where we're going to be, and I just get so impatient <laughs> for where we are right now. You know, when we started Gutenberg, we said it was going to be a 10-year project, and so it feels like we're that 60 to 70% of the way there. Um, the collaboration is going to be huge. I think there's a lot of 
interface things, I think we could have better terminology or simplify some of the things that we have drop down should maybe be radios. There's, there's just a lot in there that I think could be a lot more intuitive and more visual so that as you're changing things, you're kind of seeing what it's going to change and you get kind of more of that like a tactile feel from interacting with the software and the blocks. So that's what's on my mind for it. Thank you for the question. All right, in this section, how are we doing? Okay. But, but, but. Um, hello. Uh, uh, finally, it's really nice to meet you in person. So this is Tohidul Islam. I have a complete different question. So before asking my question, I would like to say that as a Muslim, I stand with Israel. So uh, I, I do have uh, that specific question. So you I don't know, know if I'm going to answer any questions about that whole <laughs> stuff. <laughs> is uh, that the question? Uh, the question uh, the question is all about uh, you know there are so many contents that are really dangerous for specific groups you know mm. like uh, uh, what should I say it's all about anti-semitism or you know protests and something like that are you planning for any projects in the future to you know uh, you know block those uh, anti-semitism and, and pro-terrorism contents in the future especially there are so many people there are so there are many group people they are going to buy some websites from wordpress.com you know uh, it will be really really dangerous for specific uh, you know group so i would love a great answer from you thank you so much thank you um so this is a moderation question <laughs> i'm trying not to comment on moderation stuff anymore but this is a good one um so on wordpress.com all that sort of stuff there's whole trust and safety teams I actually have a particularly on .com a really good record of, you know, there's, there's some, I think, very reasonable rules and it's built a very good reputation over the past 18 years over addressing this type of content uh, when it does pop up. Um, things against groups, whether that's anti-Semitism or anti-Muslim or all the antis that are, are represent the, the lesser angels of our nature. Um, in terms of within WordPress, you know, we don't have a, a team on WordPress.org, but also it doesn't come up very much because it's mostly just discussion about the software. But the volunteers do take things down immediately when there's something that is out of line with our community guidelines. And finally, I'll just say that open source, and particularly the guidelines and norms of our community, are very, very inclusive. It's one of my things I'm most proud of, especially when I look around this room, seeing folks from all over the world coming together, united by a common vision, and even competitors, you know, maybe commercial competitors or places where sometimes countries or leaders of countries are disagreeing with each other. The people are coming together um, to create something that belongs to all of us. It's open source, so it really belongs to humanity. And that sort of pro-humanism stance, you know, especially in a world where there's so much stuff which is frustrating or confusing or like driving me crazy, I'm sure many of y'all, it's nice to be involved with something where we can um, all work together. So, and... There's a, is there a crook or there's a crook? More questions. Okay, one more question. From me, actually. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> if that's I'm so allowed. sorry to the folks up there. Uh, if you uh, like send it to me, uh, tweet me the question or leave a comment on my blog and I'll answer it. So those uh, three folks right there. So state of the word uh, this past year was for the first time outside of the United States, and I'm curious if you have any plans for this year, where it might be. Hmm, what is, what are the suggestions? <laughs> India, oh, I do like that. I, I gotta admit though, this might be some place where I just was right before this. So I'm proud to announce that State of the Word uh, for 2024 will be in, da -da -da -da. Tokyo. <laughs> So on December 16th, 2024, um, I think we're actually gonna have a couple hundred seats in there. So let's say, what's the capacity, 250 or 350 in the theater? 30. Perfect, so I'd love to see some of you there. I just got back from Tokyo. It's one of the most amazing cities in the world on so many levels. We have this beautiful venue at like the top of a building, and then we'll do like a fun thing afterwards in our art gallery. So um, can't wait to see some of you there. This is gonna be a very exciting state of the word because more stuff is happening in 2024 than a very, very long time. And with that, I just wanna say thank you to every single person in this room because you are what makes WordPress. So let's keep making it together. And I believe the organizing crew is coming on now, right? All right, see y'all. <laughs>